Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Brandon again. Here we are today in the basement to talk about 2020. What a time to be alive or dead. A lot of people are dead this year. Not a great year for a lot of people. Now, surprisingly enough, there was actually a very kind of mixed bag for me on this YouTube channel. On one hand, the personal side of my own training kind of shit the bed a little bit. I'll talk about that. And on the other side, the equipment reviews, which this channel has really been focused on for the last year, part of it due to my own interest changing and also part of it just due to the circumstances of the pandemic and this home gym boom has been really good to me as well. So I just want to take the time today in today's video, it's the day after Christmas, just talk about 2020 in general and probably so throw some commentary about what I see for myself next year. So let's start on the personal side of the house. So the lifting side, and I set some pretty aggressive goals for myself in 2020. I wanted to put together a meet where I hit the biggest lifts that I ever have in the gym or in competitions in the past, but never really put together that perfect package. I'm the prime example of posting that Instagram picture, following the meet and saying, well, today didn't go how I wanted it to. I'm sure you all can relate that way. So I really wanted to put those three lifts together in a meet, 600 pound squat, 350 pound bench, 650 pound deadlift. I also set those numbers up as trying to hit my all time best in a meet because 2020 is the last year that I'll be in my thirties. Yeah, that's right. Two weeks from now, your boy is going to be 40. Can't even call him your boy. Maybe your creepy uncle. This guy, 40 year old, two weeks. So I really kind of want to put it together to show the old man still got it. And the year actually started off really good. Training was going great, running TSA programming as I have on and off for like the past five, six years now. I love the programming through TSA. They have free programs, by the way. If you're interested, check them out. Highly recommend them. Went to my first powerlifting meet. Didn't go how I really expected it to. And that really took the wind out of my sails. And I have a whole dedicated video on that where I kind of piss and moan about woe is me. It just kind of took the wind out of my sails from a lifting perspective and it kind of threw me for a loop because I never had something like that happen to me before. And I kind of really had to reassess my training, at least for a little bit. And, and I think part of it is I let myself use the current times as a crutch, meaning that number one, right after that, like a, literally a couple weeks after that, that's when the, all the shutdowns started happening, the gym started closing, people started not being able to train, all that. My work life changed tremendously as I wasn't able to travel anymore for work. Oddly enough, my corporate work life had been super busy the past couple of months because I do a lot of corporate style trainings for people. So for sales and technical based training, every one of our people in the field were grounded, thousands and thousands of people, which means thousands and thousands of people now have a lot of free time on their hands to take a lot of the trainings that I was responsible for. So I've been extremely busy and blessed in that regard, but just a little bit different in terms of my mindset. So I kind of let myself get more involved with work and less involved with me worrying, hitting those numbers and training. Another big problem with that was moving. So as you guys know, I was training in the garage for eight months out of this year. And even though the garage was nice, it's no basement. So maybe a part of me just wasn't really into it because I didn't have this glorious space that I do right now. And I kind of say that in jest because I really like training in the garage. It was different for sure. It's not as good as the basement, but it was still a fine training area and can't really use that as an excuse. But the whole process of living in that small, cramped, like 900 square foot house that we're in as a rental, as we're building our new house and having our new house delayed by several months, you know, it, we were told March, then April, then May, then June, then July, and we didn't get in until August. So much so, in fact, that the rental that we had basically ran out of our lease. Our landlords, even though they're good friends of ours, they're really nice to us and dealing with all the expectations of keep getting delayed, delayed, delayed. We finally had to give them a concrete date and that date came and went and our house wasn't done. We had to move out. And there wasn't a lot of places that were just gonna let us rent week to week here in Rhode Island. So move back in with my parents. Yes, your 39 year old creepy uncle moved back in with his parents, with his wife and two young boys who we spent their first and third birthday. I'm two kids, by the way, I wasn't there for two years, but both of them are within 10 days of birthdays of each other. So we had my youngest son's first birthday and my eldest son's third birthday with my parents. And during that time, all my gym stuff was in the new house, in the basement, locked away because we couldn't get access to the house because anyone who's built the house before can probably attest to all the frustration and the idiocy that goes with hiring a contractor. No offense to any contractors out there, but didn't really have the best experience. So there was kind of a lot of stuff going on in my own personal life where again, lifting, which was normally my escape, just wasn't doing it for me in that sense either. So a lot of mixed bags in terms of my own training. Now that I'm back in the basement, however, though, 
You guys hopefully have seen my rejuvenated 40 year old self get back into it. I've really liked training the last couple of weeks. I've really, really liked training, like more so than I have in the last couple of years. And that's someone who's been training for well over 25 years now. Holy shit, that's a long time. I really like training. It's not a problem. I'm just really enjoying it more. And I think that's one of the things I want to carry into 2021 as a New Year's resolution, if you will, is just appreciate training more and be more optimistic versus pessimistic, which I tend to do. If you guys watch any of those older weekly training vlog recap videos, I'm very down and negative on myself. I've been trying to actively take a more positive approach to my training. I, I think it's paying off right now, or at least it's going to until I deadlift and pass out again and get all whiny bitch face on you, but that is what it is, right? So training's been going really well. Uh, I don't have any expectations in terms of if I'm going to compete in 2021. I'm going to say I probably will. But again, given the current situation with where we are with meets being canceled and people wearing masks and limited availability for stuff, it doesn't make sense for me to get into a meet prep right now. So I'm just jumping into the Juggernaut AI, which I've really liked so far in the first couple of weeks. I'll be doing a dedicated video on that very soon, next couple of videos soon, um, and give you guys some feedback on that. But really, I've been enjoying training so far, which I think is going to be a good thing for me, build up that mental base and capacity again and get in a good spot. And then I definitely will compete in 2021. But again, with kind of just more realistic numbers in mind, or maybe no expectations, so to say, other than just what's been done in training. So things personally kind of 2020, which I think a lot of people can relate to, but here we are now at the end of 2020, things are really, really good. And I'm really hungry for more. And speaking of hungry for more, what I'm going to talk about right now is this built bar that I have in my back pocket, which is upside down, but through the magic of flipping my hand over, I can talk about. You guys have seen these on my channel several times already. I love these things. They're like 18 grams of protein, 130 to 150 calories. This is my favorite flavor. And there's a lot of flavors, guys. There's 18 flavors of these things. The white chocolate cookies and cream is the best. This is the best one. Not to say the other ones aren't good. This is the best one. I like it a lot. Whey protein isolate, main ingredient on here. It's not chewy. It's more of like a marshmallowy or I say three musketeers a lot, especially this one, like a three musketeers type consistency of a candy bar. And everyone says that because they want you to buy the bars. Take my word for it. These are the best ones that I've had. And I've had a lot of protein bars because a lot of people send them to me. If you want, you can use the link in the description box below to save 20% off your order. In fact, you should and get the white chocolate cookies and cream. And you can tell me that they are in fact the best ones you've had. So switching gears a little bit, let's talk about the channel itself. The channel well, my personal year was a little bit up and down. The channel, phenomenal, obviously. You know, it only took a pandemic for people to realize that they need to watch some old guy in his basement or garage talk about gym equipment to really become relevant. And the channel had a lot better growth this past year, which means a lot more revenue for me. So I made more on YouTube this late year than I have in any years previously, even when I was getting, you know, like 30 to 40,000 subs a year. I think this past year I probably got like 25,000, which I hadn't seen in a long time. Um, and maybe I'll do a dedicated review on income, but it, it gets a little bit complicated when you talk about what you make from YouTube versus what you make from affiliates and links and maybe other collaborations, which I still don't do a ton of. And in fact, I waited probably until the end of this year to start doing it, but it was a good year to start doing it because so many people are buying stuff for home gyms, but covered a lot of gym equipment. And it was nice because it wasn't something that was necessarily forced in my opinion, because it's not something like, oh, well, people are building home gyms. I need to make a lot of videos on building home gyms. And no, it was, I was literally moving from an old gym to a new gym and I had to redo stuff and buy new equipment. I had to go through that process myself, deal with stock issues and still am. There's still stuff I want to get in here, but it's been out of stock or not available. So it's just been a really fun experience for me to be able to chronicle some of this stuff where most people don't find it interesting. I know there's a lot of you out there that are like me that put Gorilla Tape on your mats or, you know, care about what things look like and the aesthetics of equipment and whatnot, or the coatings and the knurling close-up shots. And I know there's some of you out there, but the audience was greatly expanded this year due to COVID and the pandemic. So I'm very appreciative of that because it's going to give me an avenue to probably get some stuff here in the basement that I might not normally spend my money on as much. But since it's tax write off and I have more disposable income because of all this stuff and because of the videos itself. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I probably still won't ever finish the walls or the ceilings that people always make comments on. I kind of like the dingy and dungy look. And if I'm going to spend a lot of money on something, which that stuff would probably cost a lot of money or take a lot of my own time, I'd rather spend it on equipment that at least I'd enjoy getting more use out of than looking at a wall or 
not looking at insulation, which doesn't really bother me. That's why I don't cover it. Um, so the next year we'll have a lot more equipment reviews as well. I've been hearing a lot of questions and comments about nutrition stuff, which I used to do a lot of. I'll probably get back into that a little bit and maybe I'll actually film a little bit outside of the basement. Maybe I'll go to the basement attic, which is our first floor and our kitchen and all that stuff to give you guys some insight. But a lot of stuff that I could potentially do outside of just the equipment realm. It's just tough for me because there's a lot of ask for equipment. I also don't have a ton of time to make videos, typically like one to maybe two per week. And I have a backlog of equipment I still need to review. But if there are certain things you guys wanna see, as always, leave them in the comment section below. And if you see a comment that fits in line with something you'd like to see a video on, just thumbs that up. That's the way I know that more people wanna see it. So that's a little bit of 2020 for me little bit of a shit show, but hey, we're here. We're still alive, at least for the next couple of days. I'll be 40 soon. I'm sure I'll make some more videos about that and try to milk that for what it's worth. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.